depression. That was one of the worst things that ever happened to this country. It was awful. Uh, I was uh, six years old uh, in 1929, and uh, my dad worked in a lumber camp in the woods, and the uh, outfit shut down. So he was out of work. So my father was a miner, and there wasn't much call for mine for coal, and so he didn't work maybe a day a week or something, and it was very hard to get along. Everybody in my age remembers old Franklin D. Roosevelt when he came in. Yeah, he did start some good programs. I guess everybody loved him <laughs> because he got the, the men back to work and provided more money and so that's the reason I think he was elected for the third term. <laughs> He had what they called WPA Works Project Administration. That's for the breadwinners in the house. And then he started the CCCs for the young men. And that, that was the climate at that time. Everything was starting to look up pretty good then. And in creating the Civilian Conservation Corps, we are killing two birds with one stone. We are clearly enhancing the value of our natural resources. At the same time, we are relieving an appreciable amount of actual distress. This great group of men, young men, have entered upon their work on a purely voluntary basis. No military training is involved, and we are conserving not only our natural resources, but also our human resources. We didn't have electricity, we had kerosene lamps, and for heat, it was just the kitchen stove, which didn't come upstairs. Everybody helped each other what they could do to help each other. That's the only thing I could say that, about how people acted. They, they were all in the same situation and helped each other. Living on a farm, we grew up with, we had potatoes and everything to eat. That's one thing we did, but at that time, my father raised buckwheat. Instead of using money, you would just trade the buckwheat for whatever you wanted, like for shoes and things you couldn't raise, just like the old barter system. My mother canned hundreds of quarts of stuff. Uh, we went out and picked wild berries and, you know, anything that you could uh, get for food. And, of course, we ate woodchucks in the summertime groundhogs, and in the wintertime we eat coon. And uh, that's how you got your, you didn't have money to buy meat. I mean, there was, that was all the question. Farmers would hire us for 50 cents a day, and we got our dinner. <laughs> and that's what, we've done that to earn enough money to buy clothes to go back to school. Well, when I was born, my dad was getting, you know, he was quite old, he was in his 40s. So uh, by the time I was a young man, he was having health problems. So it was uh, up to the older boys to keep the family going. So that's where one reason uh, I got in the CCs. The morning started out with a bugle blowing. And you know, and then some of the fellows would cuss the bugler, you know, <laughs> go wring his neck and all that, the, waking us up before daylight. I suppose we got up uh, probably 6 or 6.30, get up early. Then we had to go and stand in formation. That was another bugle, go stand in formation. A bugle call to go eat. They'd all be, be seated, and everybody start, mostly start, yuck, 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 not again. I wonder what they're talking about. They brought the stuff there, what it was, creamed corned beef on toast. It had a different name in, in the army, yeah, but I can't say it here. And, well, they didn't like it, but it was hot, warm, tasted good. We had it. We got up at 6 o'clock in the morning and had breakfast at 7, and we went to work at 8. We planted trees, and there was three men to a uh, each row, one man with a pickaxe, he went ahead and he punched the hole in the ground. The second man, he put the, seat, the 
seedling in the hole. The third man came along and stepped on it or pressed the, the dirt around the seedling. That's how they planted trees. In the summertime, we pulled gooseberry bushes. And you wonder why would we be pulling gooseberry bushes? And we pulled them from a, a couple inches high to probably four or five feet high. The reason for this, the gooseberry bushes carried a, a rust disease to the pine trees. So we saved a lot of pine forests by pulling these gooseberry bushes. There was five barracks to a camp, and you had 40 men assigned to each barrack. So when you're living 40 men, you weren't too far apart. You were very close. You just had enough room in to get in between. And uh, so it was very close living. Well, the camp had a rec hall. And up that rec hall was a PX, where you could buy uh, pop and candy and raw shaving material and stuff like that. And in the hut, we had a pool table and ping pong tables. We had a fellow come up from Williamsport with the 35 millimeter camera, and we had regular movies every Thursday evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody wants to hear the bear story. Well, one day, we was up on the mountain in the gooseberry detail. Well, when they got in the truck and started for camp, this bear ran after the truck. He wanted to follow him. So they stopped and they put a log from the bed of the truck to the ground. He walked up that and all the way in camp, he right at the front of the truck, standing up with his paws on the top of the, <laughs> the roof of the cab. He got into camp by, uh, uh, he slept in our barracks. There was somebody who was in the hospital and so he slept on a bunk in our barracks. All night long, he'd sleep right there on the bed and uh, so he was a regular pet, and we put boxing gloves on him in the recreation home, box with him, and uh, even the officers liked him, everybody liked that bear. So we don't know where it come from, why it was so tame. Oh, well, I, I enjoyed it. I, uh, yeah, I enjoyed every minute because, uh, like I say, a nice bunch of fellows. We all got along well. I mean, you know, where we was from, different nationalities, it was all nice, nice bunch of fellows, yeah. Well, you learned how to get along with each other and uh, how to work together. It more or less uh, shaped your life by, well, the discipline you got in camp. Uh, it was similar to the Army. $25 is going home, and that was the purpose, to take them off the streets and put them in these camps and do this work. and. Uh, uh, feed them and all, and money go home. About $25 for, well, back then you could buy two ton of coal at that time. I received $5 a month, and $25 a month went directly to my parents. And they were grateful for that, that really $25 then was worth hundreds now probably. I can't remember all the prices, but uh, like a pair of overhauls you could probably get for a dollar 40 cents or something like that. And uh, so, I mean, uh, prices back then was low and uh, 25 hours would, would go quite a ways. I always thought the CCCs got me started in life, which they did. They gave me the skill. I became a first sergeant in the Army, and my skills, and I went to work. I went right up to the high as I could go in the trucking end of it. Anyway, I remember we had an inspection in the morning uh, before we went to work, and the captain came through and inspecting, and he stopped by my bed. He said, Private, he said, where did you learn to make beds like that? I said, the CCC, sir. He said, I thought so. I, he said, the rest of you guys come here. This is how bed is supposed to be made. I had a lot of fond memories, but I think uh, what I liked the most about the CCs and what I think about so much, I see all these young guys go in there like I was young and all that. Come in there and learn to live with the other people and get along with them. And when you leave, you are a seasoned, well-disciplined young man. It was a great thing for every young fellow that went in 
uh, uh, from all over the country. So, and there were so many, and so many thousands, hundreds of thousands probably. They built pavilions all over the country, so many pavilions. Uh, well, one thing, planting trees, planting trees. Uh, really uh, a good thing, and no trees now, after all these years, they're still there. That was proud, I was in my, it was a great part of my life, uh, the CCC camp. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was in. It uh, gave you a background of what life was about, <laughs> you know. It, uh, you uh, had a job to do, and you know you had to show up for the job and be there and do it, and follow our instructions, and all that type of, so I mean all that helps you uh, through life. I've often thought today, if uh, something happened like the Depression happened in the 30s, what would happen today? Starting a CCC again today, I don't think it could ever, because who, where could you find a young person to go to camp and do something they don't often about for a dollar a day? 